Here we can see the skin specimen with the epidermis on the top. Here we can recognize the stratified squamous epithelium uh, with the corneal layer or stratum corneum on the top of it. So this is keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. Here we can see the basal layer and the stratum spinosum, the stratum granulosum. Here we see the hair follicle. What is not normal in the skin specimen is uh, infiltration of the dermis and also infiltration of the subcutaneous tissue. And if we zoom in a little bit, if we go a little bit closer, we can see that this infiltration consists of multiple foci that fused together. And these foci consist of multiple epithelioid cells or epithelial epithelioid macrophages. We use this name epithelioid cells because uh, these cells resemble um, cells in the epithelium a little bit. However, they are, uh, they are randomly dispersed in these foci and these are actually granulomas. Epithelioid cells are transformed macrophages. They have a voluminous cytoplasm. They have usually oval shaped or uh, irregular nuclei with small nucleoli and a very voluminous cytoplasm which is uh, and this cytoplasm uh, does not have clear borders so we don't we don't see the borders of the cells and other cells <clears throat> are here and those are actually mm, multinucleated giant cells so they used to be macrophages that fused together and they formed uh, one giant cells. Uh, the nuclei are sometimes arranged uh, in the circle. Sometimes um, um, multiple nuclei are um, in one pole of the giant cells like we see here. We don't see any necrosis in the center of these uh, foci therefore we can call them non-caseating granulomas and also if if we have a look at other granulomas, all of them are without caseous necrosis. We can also see lymphocytes, like in this part uh, of the dermis, and uh, um, <clears throat> at least some of these lymphocytes are actually T helper cells, uh, which, which are the cells responsible for the transformation of the um, you know, the transformation from the macrophages into epithelioid cells but um, a lot of these granulomas are without any lymphocytic infiltration um, this is the classical hallmark of uh, sarcoidosis so naked granulomas you call them naked granulomas because they consist only of epithelioid cells multinucleated giant cells and no other cells like no the lymphocytes, no fibroblasts. Um, we don't see caseous necrosis like in case of tuberculosis. Of course, uh, um, this granulomatous disease can be anything and sarcoidosis is just uh, diagnosis per exclusion. So we need to exclude, um, for, for instance, tuberculosis. The classical tuberculosis is associated with caseous necrosis, however, not always. So we can use Thiel Nielsen stain, and uh, Thiel Nielsen stain would visualize uh, mycobacteria inside of these granulomas. Uh, we can use Worthen Steri um, in case we are looking at syphilis, and Treponemus uh, would be visible in Worthen Steri stain. Uh, we can use Grocot stain to prove the fungal infection. And if everything is negative and the clinical information goes together with a diagnosis of sarcoidosis, um, we can say that this non case ending granulomatous inflammation is probably sarcoidosis. Sarcoidosis is chronic systemic um, granulomatous disease and it can affect multiple organs. It usually affects uh, the lungs, it can affect also. Uh, lymph nodes, uh, heart, eyes can be seen in the kidney, in the central nervous system, and of course it can be seen anywhere in the skin. 
the etiology of sarcoidosis is um, unknown. The pathogenesis is not entirely clear. Uh, it is probably something to do with autoimmune problems. Women are affected more commonly than men. Um, black people are um, com more commonly affected than white and sarcoidosis has higher incidence in some northern European uh, states like Sweden or Finland. Another microscopic sign of sarcoidosis are the characteristic inclusions or bodies inside of these multinucleated giant cells. And uh, those are called asteroid bodies or Schaumann bodies. And sometimes you can also find Hamazaki-Wessenberg bodies. And uh, they are not 100% specific. And you're not going to see them in all cases of sarcoidosis. And um, I haven't found any of them in this slide, on this slide. Um, maybe I, I didn't, um, didn't looking for them hard enough. Um, and they are usually localized in the cytoplasm of these multinucleated giant cells. Uh, so, um, so I downloaded some of them for, from Wikipedia and Google. So here we can see some examples of asteroid bodies. So you can see these star-shaped um, cytoplasmic bodies. It's not entirely clear what they are. They're probably some sort of damaged cytokeratin structures. Here we can see the Schaumann bodies. Those are actually oxalate calcium uh, crystals. So here is one multinucleated giant cells with multiple nuclei and this violet, dark violet, concentric lamellar structures another shaman body, see here, and here, and here and um, Hamazaki-Wessenberg bodies uh, they consist of lipofuscin and they are <clears throat> also seen in, in the lymph nodes and also in the lymph nodes which are not affected by sarcoidosis in the region drained uh, in, in the region affected by sarcoidosis and in the, rea uh, in the reactively changed lymph nodes in that area so lipofuscin, Hamazaki, Wessenberg bodies um, so that's about it thanks for watching